Let's see, is uh, Reverend Bone in the audience? I don't, I don't see him. Okay. And we will. Call the May 16th meeting of the Lincoln Park City Council to order at uh, 7.30. If everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, which would be immediately followed by a moment of silence um, for those who have, may have lost members of their family in the past two weeks. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We could have roll call, please. Council persons do pray. Here. Higgins. Here. Kelsey is absent. Ross is absent. Salcedo. Here. Tobin. Here. And Mayor Carnes. Here. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Just uh, coming off of the the budget hearing that we are hearing that we just had the public hearing uh, going through and. Um, we're looking for the next step for that. I think what's the, that would be the approval yep, adoption. for the adoption of that that we'd be coming soon. We have a big weekend coming up. Uh, first, on Saturday at the Historical Museum, there's going to be a, um, a bell ringing there and dedication of the, uh, the pavers that they had. It started off as in commemorative for uh, the thing back in 1996, I think, when it first started, and then they had additional ones for the 100-year um, thing as Lincoln Park became a village back in 21, and in 2021 there was addition, but now there are others that were there. I think there's five or six new ones that are coming in, so they have a dedication for that. But in honor of Memorial Day, like they do for Veterans Day, they will um, have a small ceremony and ring the bell. And if you decide to, to come there, and I hope you do, you can ring it for um, members that have passed, that have served in the military, for members that are currently serving, and it just uh, is a way for people that have passed to have their, their names remembered and, uh, and to honor. Uh, curator Jeff Day does a very nice job with that, and I encourage everyone to, uh, to come down. On the next day, of course, um, Memorial Day, we have the Memorial Day Parade. The Hands of the City will be, will be putting that on, starting, I think it's at uh, Fort and White is usually right around that area, and the side streets back behind White Castles, everybody will be lined up. The parade starts at 1. That doesn't mean that you can show up at 5 to 1, and if you're, you're in the parade, show up a good 45 minutes ahead of time um, so that you can be in place and full, so that everything goes without a hitch and um, save concerns on uh, Councilman Higgins' heart as we <laughs> we're waiting for everything to, to be in place. So they did a good job in the past. I'm sure that it will be again. And directly following that will be a, um, a ceremony at the Bandshell for the, um, the American Legion will be putting on the uh, Memorial Day service itself. So go through, um, come for the, the bell ringing. Next day, go for the parade and then stay for the for the veterans ceremony for the memorial day ceremony after that um lastly probably should have been firstly um, since i've been meetings and gone all day and will be gone for a good portion of the night <laughs> wish uh, happy anniversary to my wife uh, for for 41 years today and uh well we'll see so <laughs> i don't think dinner's in the plans for tonight so and uh, with that, we will go on to the consent agenda. And 
Resolved that the following items listed on the consent agenda be approved as presented to the Mayor and City Council. One, approved minutes for our meeting held Tuesday, May 2nd. Two, study session, <laughs> corridor studies. Is the Tuesday correct? No, it's, it be, was a Monday. It would be Monday, May 2nd. One approved minutes, regular meeting held Monday, May 2nd, and then two scheduled study session, corridor studies. So move. Support. All right, then clerk call the roll. Council Persons Higgins? Yes. Tobin? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. Organized here. First action item resolved that an ordinance to amend part 12 title 6 of the codified ordinances of the city of Lincoln Park by adding a new section 1 to chapter 1276.02 entitled neighborhood business districts dash principal permitted uses be given its third and final reading and be adopted. The City of Lincoln Park ordains that Part 12 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Lincoln Park, Title 6, Chapter 1276.02, entitled Neighborhood Business Districts, Dash Principal Permitted Uses, be and is hereby amended by adding Section is that L. L as follows, by adding Section L as follows, 1276.02, Principal Permitted Uses, L, schools or training facilities limited to 20,000 square feet of gross floor area. So move. Support. Discussion? Floor area. Clerk, call the roll. Council Persons Higgins? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Tobin? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. Next item is resolved. That an ordinance to amend Part 12, Title 6 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Lincoln Park by adding a new sections to Chapter 1260 entitled General Provisions and Definitions, Chapter 1276 entitled Neighborhood Business Districts, Chapter 1278 entitled Municipal Business Districts, Chapter 1280 entitled Central Business Districts, Chapter 1282 entitled Regional Business Districts, Chapter 1284 entitled Light Industrial Districts, Chapter 12 entitled Off-Street Parking and Loading, and Chapter 1296 entitled Site Plan Review and Design Standards be given its third and final reading and be adopted by title only. The City of Lincoln Park ordains that Part 12 of the Codified Ordinance for the City of Lincoln Park, Title 6, Chapter 1260, entitled General Provisions and Definitions, Chapter 1276, entitled Neighborhood Business Districts, Chapter 1278, entitled Municipal Business Districts, Chapter 1280, entitled Central Business Districts, Chapter 1282, entitled Regional Business Districts, Chapter 1284, entitled Light Industrial Districts, Chapter 1290, entitled Off-Street Parking and Loading and Chapter 1296 entitled Site Plan Review and Design Standards be and is hereby amended by adding additional sections. I'll move on this. Support. Support. Okay, discussion? Court call the roll. Mayor Carnes? Yes. Council Persons Higgins? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. And Tobin? Next section item has a, a cover letter from James Kurtzander, city manager. In background, as part of the first phase of the allocation of the American Rescue Plan Act funds, the city was allocated $55,000 to contract for a rewrite of the city's or zoning ordinance. The purpose of this was to develop an ordinance that better matched the updated master plan. On December 6, 2021, the city was authorized to solicit bids for this work. An ARFP was posted on Mitten and originally received three proposals. A review committee comprised of John Myers, Carl Malise, Carrie Kerr, and the city, attorney, city manager met to discuss the proposals. Our initial review revealed some deficiencies in all three proposals. The committee was asked for some clarification from the three firms and informed them that we were also extending the offer to other firms to give them a chance to submit a proposal. 
Two of the three original firms sent class clarified proposals and two new firms submitted proposals. The four proposals are as follows. McKenna, $24,500. Beckett & Raider, $29,749. Community Image Builders, $40,000. Giffels Webster, $92,400. The community selected community image builders as the preferred firm based on a few factors. First being the firm's experience with various communities, including the city of Oak Park. The firm also has an extensive experience working with communities with traditional downtowns, which is the goal the city is trying to achieve. Another reason for selecting the firm through the proposals from both McKenna and Beck and Raider Rugles was that the city's was that the committee found significant value in receiving service from a firm who would be new to the city. So resolved that the bid for rewriting the zoning code be and is hereby awarded to community image builders for an amount of $40,000 funds to come from previously allocated ARPA funding. So move. I'll support. support. <coughs> going for for discussion Here's the chair, your Honor. yes sir. first off I like the idea of we found significant value in receiving services from a firm who would be new to the city I thought that was really enlightening however we're allocated 55,000 and we're only spending 40 is that $15,000 going anywhere else can we use it elsewhere when we when we come back to do the phase two of the funding allocation we can reallocate that thank you very much okay further discussion from council through the chair yes ma'am my understanding is what what's being said is is the company is new to the city seat may see it differently is that what what we're trying to say yeah absolutely mm -hmm. uh, you know to to their credit McKenna has been with the city a very long time McKenna was the firm they actually wrote the current zoning ordinance uh, Beck and Rader they, they have a lot of familiarity within the zoning ordinance as it is um, I think uh, would, I think the committee thought that a new a new group would look at it a little bit differently and maybe notice things that we haven't seen. Sure, great, thank you. Do any of the other committee members wish to to be heard to reference that? John Kerry. I think James said it very eloquently. I okay. think a, a fresh new look isn't necessarily a bad thing. Okay, then anything else from, from council? <coughs> then we will move on to, um, we have a citizen that wishes to be heard, I believe. Good evening, Mayor and Councilor Richard Kudrak. I just, um, I was fascinated by the idea of bringing somebody new into the city when historically we, we do the same old, same old. Whoever's been here for 20 years gets a new gets a, a, a an extension of the contract. But the one thing I did not understand <clears throat> was one of the primary reasons was selecting this company that are experienced with traditional downtowns. Lincoln Park doesn't have one. Lincoln Park may not have one for the foreseeable future. I know what you're striving for, but I fail to see what this new company's going to do for us that McKenna or Beckett and Raider, with their experience with the city could not have done. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else from the audience? All right. Then we will um, move on to the vote. Gary? Councilperson Salcedo? Yes. Mayor Carnes? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Ross? I'm sorry. Ross, I'm sorry. I got those marked wrong. She wants I'm to sorry. Councilperson Higgins? Yes. Tobin? Yes. Thank you. My bad. Okay, we good? I have a marked absent. Yes, we are. I'll take that as a yes. Yes, we are. Sorry. Next item has a cover letter from John Gazoo, our DPS director. On April 27th, the City of Lincoln Park opened bids for the DPS lobby door replacement and safety glass project. One bid was received for the project from Lay's Glass of Taylor, Michigan. The cost to remove, furnish, and install commercial exterior DPS lobby door with remote push button releases um, $2,956. And the cost is to furnish and install a safety glass with 
steel dead tray and microphone speaker system and existing lobby counter is $4,985 for a total of $7,941. Just the, the one bid submission. They resolved that the mayor and city council approved to award the bid to Lays Glass Company of Taylor, Michigan for the DPS lobby door and safety glass project for a total cost of $7,941. I'll, I'll support for to, to, for discussion. Okay, we're at discussion. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, well, what this was brought up. I asked about several safety issues in the lobby, and uh, one of them was the the doors that go from the lobby back into the offices um, not being very sturdy, and I still think that that, that that's not a, addressed here at all. Um, so I. Well, would like to know further more on that information. You know, we brought it up on the floor. But if I, yeah, I'll let John walk up. But I, as he's walking up, I do believe uh, the changing out of the door um, didn't have to be part of the this scope of the project. That could just be another aspect of the project that I, I we just, can do internally. Before we support this, I want to make sure that it's going to happen. Good evening, Mayor and Council. We've looked at those other two doors internally, and we believe that we can do that with our present staff, with, with the present doors. Is it here? Is that, are you set, Councilman? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Um, so the push button release at $29,556. Um, we have been talking about this for a long time. Uh, the dispatch office, the employee is no longer there. There's no one manning the gates. Um, so people would come in the front door. That's the reason for the push button release. I believe, as well as talking to employees at DPS, that that person needs to be put back in the dispatch office just for things to run smoothly and save time. When, when Penny's got to run from one end of the building to the other, or John or that, you're distracting them from the work they're doing and it's stopping them from having a fluent day of getting things done. Um, I, I honestly believe that if we're gonna spend up $3,000 on a push button release uh, and still have them running all over the building to let people in the yard and, and that, I, I'm, I'm not for spending $3,000 when in reality, I honestly feel, and talking with the employees and the director, that that person we need to fill that position again, that somebody is there at that gate. And I know you're saying this is going to eliminate that, but there's still going to be nobody at the gate, which means they're going to have to still be running to that end of the building. So I'm against this. Well, the, the purpose, as we're doing it now, is that the DPS has an entrance door that has not been enterable for several years. Right. For the period of time. So this is a, a thing that needs to. We cannot have citizens walking in through the the lift gate and then walking through the garage door to see somebody in the DPS. They need to have access to that building. And this is phase one of getting that access, is, is to coming in and, and getting that repaired so that employees, not employees, citizens have a safe way of coming in to the DPS to have their issues addressed without having to go around to the back. Now what you're talking about as far as personnel, may maybe something that's, a, that's a, a complete need and that's something that they can sort out but the focus is we need to get this done and that that's my opinion anything else from from council you have anything from the problem from the public on this i thought i had a hand before i don't see one again so so do the do the chair what's that um <clears throat> so and i just want to clarify here there says is, is if the, if the gate needs to be open during the day, is Penny still going to have to walk to the other side to open the gate? As it sits right now, either either Penny could do it, one of the two supervisors, or uh, the director. Where the employee is going to be stationed is going to do with how many people walk into the location. In reality, 
you know, how many people visit the DPS or, or walk in for, for that type of service in a day? I mean, it, it may be one, um, but I don't think that there's been a great deal of public. Um, I, can we ask John that question? John? say what I'd really like to say. Um, I believe that there is a great need for somebody at the gate. I understand the city wanting to open up the main entranceway because as long as I've been here, that main entranceway has always been blocked up. And I thought, but I wasn't here at the time, it was to reduce staffing or costs, but I wasn't here then. I, to skip over a few items, I don't think it's in the city's best interest to have my clerical, myself, or the two supervisors who have to go to the front gate in order to open it up. There is a need when citizens do come in to how maybe... Many, how many citizens come in on an average day? Yes, with you, I have not counted, but I'm going to, in the summer, it, there's more because we have citizens that want to bring stuff to utilize our dumpster, of which we charge for. Driving through the, the gate and they'd be talking to that and saying that they're going to dump it in. I'm talking about people that are coming in specifically to ask to talk to Penny about a trash issue or talk to yourself for a meeting or something along those lines. How many people come in during the course of a day? Uh, for the most part, probably zero. I mean, there, you get two or three, four uh, that do go to the front or did go to the front gate and that individual would tell them what they needed to know or resolve the issue there. Somebody having, having somebody at the front gate also gave more phone reception to where we could maybe answer more questions for people that do have questions or take complaints or what have you. But in the past, when I've given my opinion, it's, it's never counted. It's always gone back to what the city manager has wanted to do. So I'm going to leave it at that. No, I, I no, guess I'm, I'm done. You're, you're telling me that most days there's there's none, but there's a possibility of, of two to four that would be utilizing that that door in the cor in, in the course of a day. What I'm telling actually, you, if that there was a if there was a call button or a a buzzer on the on the counter in there, for the once or twice that they would be there, I don't see any big of a difference than than it would be for a, a city clerk working and going across there to handle people at the at the counter. Uh, the people have to get up from from doing their work in Treasury and then going to the counter. I, I don't I don't see the, the difference for that. And I know you don't because you don't work there. Uh -huh. I, I have, I, I have I, been there, sir. But all right. for for two to to four on on a good day coming in there, I don't see that as a big distraction for somebody walking either you know 30 feet or 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 so and then calling the person in to, to help them. That's part of the community service. The goal with this door here that we're, we're putting in here is to make it safe for the residents to come in and see somebody at the DPS. Bottom line. All right, thank you. You're, you're on through the chair? Yes, sir, go ahead. My, my question wasn't how many go to the front door. My question was how many people go through that gate. That was my question. Okay, which he, which he answered at the beginning. Just one additional item. We do receive a lot of people coming in who want to go into the auto impound lot. There is a sign there that says that they have to contact our tow truck company. We've also intercepted and have seen cars that follow our vehicles in. Uh, or 
where they may ring the buzzer and who knows what story they may, they may give and inadvertently by that remote button we may let somebody in that shouldn't be in but thank you all right further discussion clerk call the roll councilperson salcedo yes higgins no dupre yes tobin no and Mayor Carnes. Yes. Okay, next item. That is a cover letter from John Kazoo, DPS Director. In background, on May 4, 2022, the City of Lincoln Park opened bids for HVAC service. Am I on the right one here? Yes. yes. For HVAC services at the Kennedy Memorial Building, the invitation and bid asked for prices for two options, a boiler replacement only, or switching to forced air HVAC system. Below are two bids that were received. Option one, boiler replacement only. Detroit Boiler, boiler Company, $43,797.57. Flow Air Heating and Cooling, $39,680. Option two, remove boiler and install forced air systems. Allied Building Services Company, $87,200. Option two, floor air heating and cooling, $105,789. Uh, my recommendation, Mr. Kazoos, that the Mayor and City Council approve to award the bid to floor air heating and cooling for Kennedy Memorial Building renovation. Project one, for a total cost of 43,648, that includes a 10% contingency for the total bid of $39,680. We also have uh, James Hollywood from Hennessy Engineers with uh, information. Uh, this project involves the renovation or replacement of the existing boiler system within the Kennedy Memorial Building. The existing boilers in the building are in need of replacement since the entire building is being heated by one of the remaining boilers. Originally, there were three that were replaced by two larger ones, and only one is currently operational. The building has several zones that are also supplemented with forced air rooftop air handlers. Replacing the existing boilers will provide adequate comfort as the building has had for the last 20 years or more without the need for further modification. Removing the boilers and replacing them with new rooftop units and comparable mini split units would require additional roof work to be performed to support the new units and curb system they would sit on but all could provide more control over the ambient temperature in the areas of the building. The variation in bid cost between the two options is an indication of the required extra work to accommodate forced air duct work and modifications of the existing system. So be it resolved that the mayor and city council approve to award the bid to flow air heating and cooling for Kennedy Memorial Building boiler, boiler renovation project option number one for a total cost of $43,648. This includes the 10% contingency to be base bid of $39,680. Be it further resolved funds to be taken from budget year 2223 account number 101-263-931000. So move. Support. Okay, discussion? Through the chair. Yes, ma'am. I, I guess boilers sound so old fashioned to me, right? How serviceable are they? I know they you have to be specialized. Not not just every a HVAC person knows the boilers. So are, are they easily repaired? James or John? Go on. Excuse me, would you please repeat your question? The boiler system to me sounds kind of old fashioned. I wonder how serviceable they are and how easily we can get a boiler person there to service. 
You have to be licensed to uh, do boiler work, yes. The boilers, depending on their sizing, sometimes have to be uh, inspected once a year, twice a year, and sometimes four times a year. Uh, but there is a greater cost to remove them to put in the forest air system. And right now, it seems like with money being a little bit tight, that system has been uh, heated for ever since it was built with a boiler system. Seems like it'd be cheaper to put in what was there, which has been functioning for 20 years, and get another 20 years out of the replacement. Okay. And then the other uh, uh, difficulty right now is the availability. Because right now, what we have there is non functionable. Mm -hmm. So we've got to get heat in the building before cold weather. Right. And these boilers would have to be ordered. Thank you. So the boilers are an efficient way of heating the. Yes, they are, and they have been for years. Okay. Are, are there is there difficulty securing someone to to work on the boilers? Uh, we have not had any issue. No. Okay. And it's, so would be just be updating the ones that are there, or total replacement? Total replacement. For the ones that have lasted since nineteen, for the it, last twenty years. So. Yes. Because okay. the existing ones are no longer functional, nor can we get replacement parts because the companies that built it or built them are no longer in existence. Does that, Councilwoman, are you, are you set? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, I just have a question for John. Sorry, John. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the boilers, there's two there, one's operational now but not operating well, will we be able to get these systems in time for fall when we need to turn the heat on? My goal is tomorrow to make contact with uh, the low red contractor if awarded and ask them to order the boilers right away. Okay, and you have no idea how back ordered they are or anything? Uh, right now, the last time we talked, they thought that they were 14 or 16 weeks out. Thank you. Further discussion? Court call the roll. Council Persons Higgins? Yes. Tobin? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. Next item has a cover letter from our city manager. Uh, approval of contract extension wage increase for the what I miss? The engineering. Pansy. Where'd it go? Oh, yeah. sorry, James. Uh, the cover letter from James Kazan on May second, twenty twenty-two. I was directed, city manager, to it? pursue a three-year contract extension with Hennessy Engineers Incorporated. John Hennessy has provided me with a letter proposing a three-year extension of the current rates attached. The letter states, as you are aware, Hennessy Engineers contract for professional engineering services is set to sunset in July of this year. Hennessy has had the pleasure of partnering with the City of Lincoln Park since 1993. We're proud of the numerous state and federal grants and projects completed in our tenure. Our goal is always to be responsive and provide cost-effective solutions to critical infrastructure needs and improve the quality of life in the community. We understand the financial hardships and infrastructure needs and challenges facing the community and we look to be part of the solution in these problems. Therefore, we are formally requesting a three-year extension of our contract at the existing hourly rates and cost structure for the duration of the extension. So be it resolved that Mayor and Council approve the proposal from Hennessy Engineers Incorporated for a three-year contract extension. So moved. Support. Discussion? Who's the chair, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Just a question and a comment. First off, on the resolution, can we have it where it says extension at the current rates? I know the cover letter says that, but not on the resolution. And my comment is, had we gone out for bid, the rates would have increased. So that's why I believe this was a good deal with a company that's been with us for okay, over 20 it, years. 
Is it good for the for the mover and supporter to have that language added? Absolutely. Extension at the current rate. Yep. Okay. Further discussion? Very none. Court call the roll. Council Persons Dupre? Yes. Tobin? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. Now the one I had out of order then. Um, this cover letter from James Kazan again, approval of contract extension and wage increase for the um, patrol for police. Uh, over the past few years, the city's police department has continued to struggle with recruitment and retention. The department's wages have fallen significantly behind neighboring communities and our other comparable departments. Currently, the department is, dying, is down nine officers. According to Chief Waters, this is the lowest staffing level the department has had during his tenure and likely ever. While the city has been proactive in hiring cadets and sending them to the police academy, this has not yet yielded enough results to restore staffing to what is needed to provide public safety. To further address the, the issues, the city has proposed a patrol unit one-year contract extension with the following wage increases. A $6,500 increase on July 1, 2022. A 2.5% increase on July 1, 2023. While these increases might seem drastic, they do not even put the department in the top pays of our neighboring communities. There's the hope that this increase will help us retain our officers and recruit new candidates. Uh, the Lincoln Park Fraternal Order of the Labor Police Labor Council has voted to accept the proposal extension. So be it resolved that the mayor and council hereby approve the one-year extension and wage increase for the Lincoln Park Fraternal Order of the Police Labor Council. So move. Support. Discussion? Through the chair. Yes, ma'am. Um, so the, in the resolution it says a one-year extension and it's going to be the one year starting on July 1st and then on July 1st, 2023, a 2.5%. So shouldn't it be a two-year extension it's only a one-year extension it doesn't expire in 2022 it's adding a year at the end of the current collective bargaining agreement so it's a one-year extension at so the when end does of the it. contract come up for bargaining it'll come up in 2024 2024 yeah so it expires June 30th 2024 now with provided approval okay for but they will be getting another increase of two and a half percent in July 2023. Yes. Okay. Through the chair? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely so important. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion from council? Okay. Public discussion? Richard Kudrak, I'm going to repeat something I've told you many times. If a Lincoln Park resident is not safe in their own home, there is no reason to live in Lincoln Park. Having a police department that's understaffed nine people, and despite the best efforts of the chief to recruit and retain his people, the pay and benefits is well below other communities. It's, I think it's imperative that you approve this raise you improve the, the this immediate raise, the two and a half percent next year, and you communicate with the chief on a regular basis what else the city can do to help the police department upgrade their staff. I want to sleep well at night. I don't want to worry that the police department doesn't have enough patrol officers driving up and down my streets. Thank you. Anything th further from the audience? Seeing none, then Clerk, if we could have the roll, please. Council Persons Higgins? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Tobin? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. This item resolved that the special event permit number six be approved for the Friends of the Lincoln Park Farmers Market, event to be held in the City of Lincoln Park on Sundays from June 5 to October 30th, 2022, and a holiday market on November 20, 2022. 
from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the vacant lots adjacent to 1677 Fort Street under the following conditions. One, a special event to cease at 5 p.m. Two, applicants shall be responsible for cleanup of all debris associated with events from the surrounding properties. So moved. Support. Okay. Then uh, discussion, I guess. Um, through the chair. Yes, ma'am. When I look at the um, the recommendation, the estimated cost recovery, um, and then this is on the ones coming up also. The police department and DPS just have lines through it. Do they expect any cost to this? No. No? Okay. No, she just put a slash there instead of a zero when she was, yeah. Okay. Further discussion? Court call the roll. Council Persons Dupre? Yes. Tobin? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. Next item is resolved that special event permit number seven be approved for McCafferty's Bar to hold their annual cruise beach party at 4210 4th Street, Lincoln Park, Michigan on June 25 and 26, 2022 from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. under the following conditions. One, tent to be inspected by the fire department prior to use. Two, special event to cease at 11 p.m. Per, per municipal code 666.04. Three applicants shall be responsible for cleanup of all debris associated with events from surrounding properties. Fees paid and insurance filed. So moved. Support. Discussion? Court call the roll. Council Persons Higgins? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Tobin? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. Next item is resolved that special event permit number eight be approved for the 2022 Cruise and Down River event to be held in the City of Lincoln Park on June 25th, 2022 from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. for the Mustang. Four, three applicants shall be responsible for cleanup. <laughs> like Just a tad. To be held in the City of Lincoln Park on June 25th, 2022 from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. for the Mustang Owners Club of Southeastern Michigan Utilizing Memorial Park. Fees paid, insurance filed. So I'll move. This. Support. Discussion? Court call the roll. Mayor Carnes? Yes. Council Persons Dupre? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. And Tobin? Yes. Thank you. Next item is a miscellaneous that had originally been on the considered for the agenda, but then it was removed and now it's not that. Where's mud? Uh, approval of tentative agreement with the Government Employees Labor Council, or GELC as we'll go through this. Background, on April 25, 2022, the city's bargaining team and bargaining team representing the Government Employees Labor Council, GELC, came to a tentative agreement on a new collective bargaining agreement. The highlights of the agreement are as follows, a $3,000 flat wage increase to all steps in year one, a 2% wage increase in year two, restoration of 60 minute lunch period, personal leave time to match TPOAM, overtime language change to match TPOAM. On Monday, May 2nd, the GELT group met to discuss the vote on the TA and the TA was ratified at that, at that meeting. So be it resolved that the mayor and council hereby ratify the tentative agreement between the government employees labor council and the city of Lincoln Park. So move. Support. Discussion? Clerk call the roll. Councilperson Salcedo? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Tobin? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. Uh, moving on to accounts and claims payable, the um, payment to DTE was already done due to um, the due date on the, on the check, or on the bill rather. Resolve that the accounts and claims payable for those items greater than $25,000 be approved as follows. Downriver Utility Wastewater Authority, 
March 2022 sewage user fee and May 2022 excess flow, $259,457.90. DTE, April 2022 street and traffic light maintenance, gas and electric usage, $83,351.83. Ferguson Waterworks, Neptune 360 annual software fee, $29,310.91. GV Cement Concrete Restru Reconstruction Program number 14, $55,616.94. GFL, May Residential Curbside and Recycling, $204,875.36. MERS, April 2022 Defined Benefit, $246,097.17. I'll move in this. Support. Support. Discussion? First call the roll. Mayor Carnes? Yes. Councilperson Salcedo? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Higgins? Yes. And Tobin? Yes. Did you do 9 and 10 together or did you miss number 10? No, they were done. Well, usually talk to the audience, but in this. Okay, city manager's report? Yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a couple things for you this evening. Um, about a week or so ago, I sent around a digital copy of a goals draft document based off of the conversation we had with the facilitator as well as uh, working with the department heads to kind of put a put an actionable plan together. Looks a little bit different from, from what you may have remembered from the original uh, facilitated session. That's because I took some of the information, turned it, revised it into to different goal language, um, and then have added some actionable steps from the department heads. I, I passed out a uh, hard copy of that tonight with um, the intention that if you guys have any feedback over the next couple days, let me know because uh, I do intend to bring that back for a, a formal approval at the next meeting. Uh, just a quick CBA update on the collective bargaining uh, process here. Uh, so we've got one now sewn up. Uh, GLC was set to expire in, on June 30th, and that is now now done, ratified on both sides. Uh, we've got the one-year extension with patrol. Um, moving forward, we have meetings this week with TPOAM and fire. Hopefully we can come to an agreement and have these done as well. Um, you know, we started a little early on purpose because we knew it was going to take some time and there were going to be some bumps along the road, but I'm glad we did because, you know, we're moving along pretty well, I think. A uh, quick update on potholes. We've been talking about different ways to, to improve the way we do potholes, um, one of which uh, in the past we've used a roller to help push down the... Uh, the, the cold patch. Uh, apparently the roller has been out of service this season so John was going to call the uh, manufacturer to try and uh, see about getting it repaired. Also we, we had talked a, at length a little bit lately about the spray patcher. Um, as it turns out uh, we need to get the manufacturer out to give our guys um, a training on it. Our seasoned employee that used to use it has moved on. Um, and then the last little bit I want to highlight uh, working with the DDA, the DDA, DIA, the Detroit Institute of Arts has installed the DIA Inside Out program for the year. Uh, we've got a couple pieces throughout the area, which it, they look fantastic. It came out really, really great. Um, I've been in contact with the community engagement department at the DIA to try and put together a, a nice little event of a little walk walkthrough of all the uh, art with one of their volunteers who can really talk about it, give a little history, give a little bit of the information on the art. So look for that coming in the reasonably near future. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah, um, so if you go to the bell ringing on the 21st, you'll be able to see one of them because it's directly in front of the, um, the museum. Yep, that's a, a Van Gogh piece. A Van Gogh piece, and Van Gogh had painted um, mailmen on occasion, so this is one that he did of uh, somebody that was in the, mm -hmm. the mail service. And there's one in front of City Hall also. But that's not what one to, but there has been a significant increase in the amount that the Blue Cross Blue Shield is, is charging all of, um, I mean, across the board is yes. 10 to 15 percent. Yeah, it's, it's approximately 13 percent the I increase. I asked if you've been working with the um, 
the groups as far as letting them know what the the best value would be under our plans and if then there was a need to have a meeting with with all of the employees as, as an open forum to answer the question so we've been um and throughout the, this round of negotiations, for one, uh, when we were made aware that the increases were coming, we've been telling all of the unions as we've been, been going through that the increases are coming. Most, mostly we didn't have final numbers until about two weeks ago. Um, but we were informing them that, that increases were coming and we were intending to also offer some alternative plans. We've been offering an HMO that has been at no cost to employees, uh, but this year we also have added an, another alternative, which is a high deductible plan that carries the um, health savings account component with it. Also over the last couple of weeks, we've had four different meetings um, with employee, employee groups that have been open to all employees. There's also another one tomorrow. So we've been, been doing a significant amount of outreach on this uh, between the employees and also with uh, the labor groups. Okay. Anything for do, the, do chair? the chair? Yes, go ahead. Um, I've had a lot of people asking me on the 1000 block of White Street. Um, they, they, they did the blacktop, but uh, it's not, they want to know what else is coming because it's, it's clearly not the sewers are too too high the, the, they don't come all the way up to the street are we getting another layer there or what's going on I'm looking at uh, <laughs> Jim Holland's right there yeah there will be um, they'll be raising the structures in that yeah right now they're in the prep Operation sec section of the work. Um, so yes, there will be more work done. Okay, thank you. And then my other, I got several complaints today from New York Street, um, from the, our trash company, uh, GFL. Uh, they missed some trash. They 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 were the ones that they did do. They were putting their cans in the driveway for some reason, all up and down the street. So. You know, it was seemed like a, a pattern because there were several people who called and complained about it. Okay, I'll check to see if they called us too, so that we can have the addresses and report it. That's, that's all, that's all. Uh, Tracy. Um, this is just kind of a general knowledge. I don't know if James knows this or not, but the sweepers from Wayne County were out on Saturday. They went all the way up Dix, and then they they continued in through Southgate. They're huge. Uh, these sweepers are huge and I looked at them and I thought those couldn't be ours but um, so those did come through so that was good to see yeah I think they've, they've committed to doing a couple sweeps per year good thank you Chair? yes ma'am uh, James is there a map of where the DIA um, paintings are you know what that is something we're working on finalizing using some GIS um, and we'll obviously have that before we do the walkthrough but yeah. It would just be nice to put it out there so right. people that are out on a nice day can actually know where to go to look for No, them. absolutely. And I've done one very similar in the past with, with a different art program where we actually did an interactive map. So you could like click on the specific point and it would pull up a picture of the piece you're going to look at and the description. So I would look for that. Okay. Yeah, I've seen three of them. Three of them, they look nice. Mm -hmm. Are you all yes, set? Yes, I'm done. Um, Prayed is... Sunday. The uh, median has been mowed to Champaign, but from Champaign south, it's um, it's quite high. So we could look at getting that cut. And then at the War Memorial I itself, the uh, ropes that, that hold the flags in place need to be replaced. Um, it's, they've been knotted and tied off again. And it would be good if that could be done before um, Mm -hmm. before the, the ceremony on Sunday. Anything else, City Manager? From to the Chair? Yep. Just a reminder that the carnival opens Thursday and the grass needs to be cut. Right, we've been in contact with uh, Universal about scheduling for the week. Thank you. Can, can okay. I ask why the carnival was set up on the cement parking Because line? the grass is so wet. Okay. Um, it's not so much wet on the edges, but when you get into the center, it's just... So yeah, it, it's, yeah, instead it of damaging anything, we decided. I, Dennis went out and looked, and I, you know, we just decided to put it there. But we did save some parking in the parking lot. Okay. So, 
Okay, our um, line instructor is, is under the weather, so we'll reschedule her report for, for another time. We'll then go to uh, citizen communications. Anyone wishing can... Good evening, Richard Kudrak. I sent you folks an email today. I got no response, so I guess I'll have to ask you tonight. Obviously, you're talking about the uh, funding for the police department, and I wanted to know what, what was the status of the uh, public safety ballot proposal that was initiated quite some few years ago. I don't have a clue. It got renewed once, at least once that I know about. Is it even still effective? What is the status of it today? And does anybody know the last time it was renewed? Gary, are you aware? I believe the last time it was renewed was in 2017, and it is still still active right now. Doesn't that have to be renewed on a more regular basis than fi I, five years? I 19, I will go look, but I don't have that information. I wasn't included on that email, so I wasn't aware but that you is, were looking for that information. So. All right. Yeah, obviously, giving the police department a, a $6,500 raise, which is absolutely mandatory, by the way, um, does the ballot proposal, does that help offset any of that additional cost, or is my understanding of what it does just totally foreign by this time? What, what does that do financially to the city? I, I, I guess I'm not following if you're asking if the millage would is, is put aside in a separate pot that would... Yeah, what do you use the money for? Well, it goes for funding the, the police and fire departments. Well, was it capped? You, 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 you could only go to a certain limit and you can't go any higher? As far as the millage collection? Yeah. Yeah, we could only go to what was proposed on the ballot. Well... Like I said, I, I believe public safety needs additional funding and either a headly override or the continuation of this public safety ballot proposal uh, might be one avenue to do that. Thank you. Okay, sir. Jason Bear, uh, re resident. As a resident from that 1000 block of White Street, I did appreciate the uh, update on the uh, asphalt repair we are getting. That, that was very good to hear. But I'm also a member of the Hands of the City of Lincoln Park group. And I know it's been mentioned a little bit, but we are all very, very excited for the Memorial Day parade uh, this Sunday. Um, we had our, our big walkthrough meeting uh, yesterday on it. And uh, I'm just hoping that everyone can cross all of their fingers and toes uh, for good weather for uh, this Sunday. Uh, really, really looking forward to um, all the other events surrounding the parade throughout the weekend, uh, the bell ringing, the, the spring fling uh, car carnival that we're having. And uh, I hope a lot of Lincoln Park uh, residents will be able to uh, come out and uh, help us uh, honor the uh, fallen that have paid the ultimate price for our freedom. Thank you. Hi, Leslie Lynch Wilson. Thank you for approving our special event permit for the farmer's market. Um, so just a reminder to everybody at home that the Lincoln Park Farmer's Market starts Sunday, June 5th, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at our new location of Mellows Park in downtown Lincoln Park between Arlington and O'Connor on Ford Street. So every Sunday, June through October, along with a fun late November holiday market, that's where we will be. Our, we also um, accept SNAP, EBT, credit, debit, WIC, Project Fresh and Senior Project Fresh at the market. We will be announcing some fun events soon. We will have a food navigator at the market this summer from the National Kidney Foundation of Michigan, which is funded by the Michigan Fitness Foundation. Food navigators work in farmers markets that accept food assistance benefits on underserved communities, helping shoppers plan healthy, affordable meals. And our food navigator is a dietitian. It will be a great addition to our market.
Our sponsors this year are Accounting Plus, Beaumont Health, Buson's Appliance, Lincoln Park Chamber of Commerce, Smart, Western Wayne Family Health Centers, the Guidance Center, Wayne Metro, and KM Law. And then we have in-kind sponsors of Motor City Graphics, Park Restaurant, on-site Lock and Key in City of Lincoln Park. And we have grant funding by Kalina Foundation, Michigan Farmers Market Association, and Wayne Metro. We also have a position available, a children's program coordinator for our Power of Produce Pop Club for the kids, four to six hours a week. If you know somebody that's looking for something um, with those few hours, the position is on Indeed as well as on our Facebook page. Hope to see you at the market. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hello, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, my name is Frank Liberati. I'm actually a candidate for uh, the first uh, Senate district, which includes Taylor, uh, Allen Park, all of Lincoln Park, Ecorse Rouge, Melvindale, and quite a portion in southwest Detroit. So I just wanted to, to introduce myself. I'll stay after the, uh, the meeting's adjourned if you want to ask me any questions. Um, I'm a lifelong Allen Parker. I know a few of you, hopefully you all know about my business in Allen Park, Liberati's Italian Deli and Bakery, and hopefully you've uh, shopped there before. But uh, I just want to thank you for the opportunity, and I will, I will stick around after the meeting. So thank you. Anyone else? I'm not seeing anybody, so we'll move on to... Oral reports to the mayor and council. Council President Salcedo. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, residents of Lincoln Park. I'll make this brief. Um, uh, my colleagues will talk about all the events I'm about to say, the Spring Fling, the Memorial Day Parade, and also the bell ringing on Saturday, so I'll let that go. I just want to wish everybody a happy Memorial Day on May 30th. And finally, congratulations to Mayor Carnes and his wife of, I'll just say, over 40 years of marriage and years. plenty of time to have dinner. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and Councilman Higgins. Um, it's already mentioned, but I, I gotta say it again. The parade is this weekend. It is Sunday. It will start at one o'clock. Um, if you are in the parade, we're asking everybody to please be there 1130 at O'Reilly's parking lot. Um, everyone will be set up from there. Um, and we are going to, you know, there, there are quite a few people to be in the parade this year. We have well over 45 groups, and in the, inside the groups, there are some that have 100 people coming with them. So uh, it's, it's quite hectic, so please get there early and we'll line you up. Um, also, we already mentioned the, the bell ringing on uh, Saturday. Um, it is a, a fantastic ceremony, um, and um, I, I encourage everybody to go see it. It is something very special. Um, I also would like to remind everybody, um, the hands of the city who put on the parade are also getting together and putting together the comic book collector show. Um, and we have booths. And uh, please, guys, you can see us on our Facebook and on our webpage. Please check it out. Um, and that's all I have for tonight, sir. Thanks, sir. Councilwoman Tobin. Uh, I have a couple things. First of all, I, I received an email from Mr. Kudrow about the food trucks and the ordinances, and um, I'm in agreement with this email. I think, you know, we passed the ordinance on the food trucks, but it makes it very difficult for someone to come into the city and do business. Um, I think we re need, need to revisit that, um, compare other cities. Detroit just opened it up. Um, it's just too expensive to come in and do a weekend or a day or two and with what they ch were charging them to do. So I think we need to find a more friendly user way to get food trucks in the city because they are everywhere now. I mean, everywhere that's allowed, they're, they're there. And it brings good things to the city. I mean, people enjoy them, and I think we need to make it easier. That being said, on um, the Spring Fling Carnival, they're setting up right now. It starts Thursday, May 19th at 4 o'clock, goes to 10.30. Uh, Friday, 4 to 10.30. Saturday, noon to 10.30. And Sunday, noon till 9 o'clock. You can go to go to thecarnival.com and get discounted tickets. I think they're $25 
when the carnival starts, you can get them for $17 until midnight on the 18th. So that's a good thing. Um, there's a family in the city, uh, Gildia, Erin Gildia, she's 25 years old and she lost her parents a couple years ago. She lost her brother a week ago, so she's all alone and it, it's very sad because they've been, her and her brother were trying so hard to make a go of things and there is a, a fundraiser for them at the old school bar on May 21st at 5 o'clock at 2116 Dix. If you can go and show some support, Lincoln Parkers like to support each other and this little girl needs all our support that we can give so there will be raffle baskets and food. If you can, please come out and support her. At the last meeting, I made a request for people to go out in the city and help clean something out, anything that they saw that, that bothered them, if they could spend some time. And I received a really nice email from David Jones. Um, him and his wife went out, uh, they went on Winchester Street, and they cleaned all the curbs up. They went down Electric Street, they cleaned the curbs up, they cleaned the sewer caps up. And he sent me a really nice email um, I would again like to extend that invitation to everybody. If there's something that you don't like that you've been looking at, please grab some friends and go clean it up. Um, and to David Jones and his wife, I just want to say a big thank you that you made my day and I hope other people used you as an example and, and go out and do some stuff. And the concert series start June 2nd, which isn't far off. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Councilwoman Dupre. Okay, and I'm going to remind everybody about the parade. It starts at 1 o'clock. Thank you, DPS, John, for having those potholes filled on electric. Much appreciated. We're going to be utilizing that space for the parade. So that's great. Other than that, I have to say good night and God bless. Thank you, ma'am. We received some good news today, or the, the Downtown Development Authority received a $20,000 grant from Total Health Care. That money is going to go toward the, um, the physical fitness um, program that they are going to be putting up in a location in the downtown. It's an outside fitness. Um, they already have the equipment and it's ready, ready to go. They're just looking to secure the um, proper site and um, the additional funding through Total Health Care will be um, a great thing. Now, on the 22nd, we're going to have, uh, 21st, we have the bell ringing. The 22nd, we're going to have the parade and the Memorial Day service. But from the 22nd to Memorial Day, which would be, what, the 31st, I believe, right around then that time. 30th. Or some kind. This is the 30th, I think. For Memorial Day. Go down to the War Memorial itself. There are 135 names that are on there. Each of those 135 names have represented a person that left their home in the city of Lincoln Park and did not return. And it's through their service um, that we have the right to claim we are free. And we are free due to their sacrifices. So if you have time in that uh, the next 10 days or so, go down there and and read the names. I recommend you, you read them out loud so that the, the names are, are heard once again. So take time to go down there and uh, remember the sacrifices that they made for us so that we can we can live free. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Support. Court call the roll. Councilperson Salcedo? Yes. Dupre? Yes. yes. Higgins? Yes. Tobin? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. Thank you.